Hey guys, how's it going? I know it's been a little while and I'm stuck inside and I'm not outside with Venita and Rupert doing really cool stuff, seeing what WA has to offer or New Zealand. Um, but this is photography, hiking and camping. So today is all about photography and I've had to be stuck inside because it's raining, thunderstorms, really not much fun. Not much fun to be out there anyway. I think I wanted to just spend some time talking to you about the camera I've bought for our trip that's coming up soon. So whether some of you know or not, I'm not sure, but um, Venita and I, we're heading off to um, Canada for about six weeks. So we're gonna see some of the East Coast, some of the West Coast, and then drop down into New York and uh, just catch up with uh, some family we've got over there. When I was thinking about the traveling, and what the weather's like in Canada, I started to get a bit nervous about my Sony that I have. I was fine with the RX100, it's small, it's pocket size, you can always just drop it into a pocket if it starts to rain or snow, and they're relatively inexpensive. I mean, it's pretty pricey, but relatively inexpensive. So, I knew I was covered there for vlogging, um, but as a professional photographer, I was a bit concerned about only having one camera and what would happen if it went wrong. So I started to do a bit of research. I thought, I need a second shooter, something that's gonna get me out of trouble when I'm traveling, uh, something I can rely on if my Sony was ever to break or had to go in for repair. So I did a bit of research, had a look around, what could I do? And I don't know why I'd never stumbled across it before, but I decided to go with the uh, Olympus OND uh, EM5 Mark II. Um, it's a really solid camera, it looks a bit sexy. Uh, amazing lenses, like the whole reason I got this was the sharpness, but the key thing, the key thing, weather sealed. None of this Sony, yes we might get, you know, could get rained on, it's not gonna be any good. This thing is weather sealed. Uh, I was told by the guy in the shop, and I've done my research as well, that you can literally practically shoot underwater. I mean, you can't, but as far as bad weather conditions go or like tumultuous weather conditions go, this boy is gonna get you out of trouble. It's weather sealed, it's grand. It's lighter than my Sony and it's cheaper than my Sony, like all around. Lenses are cheaper, micro four thirds, so everything's smaller. Um, but it's still, this thing can still, although it's got a 16 megapixel sensor, it can still take a 40 megapixel image, but the, by blending, by with the, it's got a five axis image stabilization in it. So what it does is it, it moves the sensor and it will blend them together to create a 40 megapixel image, which is astounding. It's a 16 megapixel camera. It's small, it's lightweight. So it did everything I needed. So there's a few other things I thought, well, what would be handy? Well, you know what would be, what would be handy? Flip out screen. A poseable flip out screen. So um, you can vlog if you want to vlog. Um, a great selection of lenses, all very affordable and they're all very sharp. Um, so a big issue for me was the fact that I was going to be traveling around with all this heavy gear and expensive gear. Like my Sony 24 to 70 f2.8, that's like two and a half grand. And I didn't want to be traveling around with a two and a half grand just the lens then not even the body and all the rest of them this one here I picked this up for uh, 600 bucks or something like that just for the body I got the lenses new because I like to have new glass and there wasn't anything at, on the market at the time before we were due to go away so um, but even then still very affordable so I summed it all up I was like mm, I've got a really expensive Sony I could branch out into that do I get a second body there but just everything about it was telling me no, um, just expense wise. It was more throwing more money at Sony. I'd still only have one body. I could go out and get the new uh, A7 III body, but I, didn't, I just didn't want to justify spending that kind of money uh, with the tax return, the good old tax return. Um, so I thought this would be a better option. And I can't wait to show you the images. I've already had a bit of a go. The autofocus in stills mode is really, really fast. And it's gonna be really handy for when we're out and about. We wanna catch, capture that image without it having to hunt or anything like that. Not really that the Sony does that, but it's, it's a nice feature to have. 
the 40 megapixel image is going to be nice for any stills that I can take because I also use it for work. Uh, like product photography would be a good example or interiors, that kind of thing. So it only has one memory card slot, but it's, um, it's a slightly older camera now. I think they started to build them around about 2015, 2016, something like that. Um, but yeah, the, for me, the main thing was the fact that it was just going to be a lightweight camera that looked nice, that's robust, that will last the weather. Because Canada, the temperature's going to be going up and down and up and down. It could be raining one minute and I don't want to have to keep trying to find cover or hide my camera under my jumper. The 5-axis image stabilisation is out of this world and I think it gives you the equivalent of four extra stops. Something I didn't know, and this is probably something I should mention, with a Micro Four Thirds camera, according to Tony Northrup, who seems to know his stuff along with Chelsea, um, they mentioned that a Micro Four Thirds, you have to also double the f-stop, so the aperture value, um, when it comes to focal range. I've had mixed information with regards to how much light a lens lets in. So if it's 2.8, I think that equates to something like 5.6. But does it let in 5.6 worth of light? Not that I've found. Another issue is when you've got an ISO of 200 on a Micro Four Thirds, again, with the reciprocal um, equation, your 200 ISO actually becomes something rather like 800 ISO. But because of the crop factor, you do get the noise, you do get the grain. And I actually quite like that grain. If you have a little, if you get a chance to have a look, or maybe I'll post a, an image, it's quite nice, it looks filmic, so it's gonna create some really good images for me. The images are very sharp, and I think that's really important when it comes to taking nice pictures. Another really useful feature with this is it's got Wi-Fi, so I can still send Wi-Fi images over to my phone or control it uh, separately with my phone, uh, should there be terrible rain or, or snow, or a difficult angle that I can't get to, I still am able to do some controls through Wi-Fi, which is gonna be a really handy feature. Wi-Fi also means that I'm gonna be able to send images to my phone and then edit them on my phone and then post them on to social media instantly. So I just wanted to take a little time just to tell you about this camera really, uh, almost justify why I, why I got it. Um, it's, photography is an expensive business, it's an expensive game, but I do it for the, for the love, but also I don't want to do it so I get broke. Like photographers, if you ask any photographer, there's very few who will actually say, yeah, I make heaps of money, it's fine. We don't, generally, we don't. So this is a affordable and practical way of getting the images I want uh, and that I need and that you guys seem to enjoy um, for a fraction of the price. So, as I've mentioned in this vlog, we are actually going soon. We're uh, heading off to Canada. We may have mentioned in other videos. We're all really excited and there isn't long to go. This means that, unfortunately, there won't be any videos for a little while. But when we come back, we're going to have episode after episode after episode of our six-week adventure in Canada. We're hitting the likes of Vancouver, Banff, Whistler, Quebec, and then going all the way around Nova Scotia hoping to head to Halifax and a few other sort of coastal paths along the way. We're going to be hiking, climbing mountains and trying not to get eaten by bears. So that should be good fun. So stay tuned and where and when is possible, I'll get some videos uploaded for you. But uh, if you've ever been interested in Canada, watch this space because we are going to hit it hard. Okay, catch you guys.